including Antony Blinken. Because the United States cannot be trusted. The news revealed in Moscow for the first time that Russia and Ukraine had actually initialed a peace agreement in Turkey under the aegis of President Erdogan in April of last year came as a surprise to nobody who follows this show because we have repeatedly told you about it. And it didn't come as a surprise to the great mass of the public in Western countries because they were not told about it. They were not shown it. They have not seen the 18-page document initialed by Kiev and Moscow in which it was agreed uh, that Ukraine would be an entirely neutral country that not only would Ukraine not be in NATO, but NATO would not be in Ukraine. That the provisions of the Minsk agreement for self-government of the kind that Scottish and Welsh people have on their domestic affairs would be enjoyed by the people of Eastern Ukraine who had never accepted the coup in Kiev in 2014. We knew of the existence of this document, but we had never seen it before. Putin produced it for his African visitors, led by Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of the Republic of South Africa. It was the receipts. It was the goods finally on view. Not that that made it into any Western newspaper or onto any Western television news broadcast. And yet, the news could scarcely be more significant, could it? Because that means that everybody who has died since April of last year, which is the vast majority of the casualties in this war, needed to have died. It means that all those buildings that are no longer standing, all that infrastructure that is now destroyed, all those wasted billions, tens of billions of dollars of weaponry on fire, on the step, was all for nothing. All could have been avoided. Now, that's a big story, right? Even if you want to try and debunk it, it's a good story, right? Why would the entire Western media fail to report the presentation of an 18-page peace document in Kiev and Sko? Well, the answer, in a way, is simple. Because that agreement was deliberately forbidden, scuppered, wrecked by none other than Boris Johnson, who was dispatched by, presumably, none other than Joe Biden, and Antony Blinken, who sent Boris Johnson to waddle the streets of Kiev, pretending he was in a war zone, in order to warn Zelensky that he must not sign the document that he had just inked and initialed in Istanbul. That means that Boris Johnson has the blood of all those tens of thousands, scores of thousands of people who've died since April of last year. It means that Blinken, it means that Biden, it means that the West have got all that blood on their hands. And it means that the Western media, who must know this, but who are deliberately covering it up in an act of gross deception, on their own readers and their own audience also have that blood dripping from their hands. That's quite serious, isn't it? At least it seems so to me. Africa is in the news not just because it went to Kiev and Moscow. It's on the, 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 the move in the news agenda again 
only if you're watching alternative media. Because if you weren't, you wouldn't know about the French soldiers arrested by the Chadian army this very day for illegal carrying of arms on their territory. French soldiers, the French Foreign Legion, having long ago now been kicked out of Chad, were captured in Chad, fully equipped, fully armed, indeed armored. Africans won't put up with this anymore, you see. Colonialism is dead. They wish no ill necessarily on the people of the former colonizing countries, but they don't trust them. 